It is said that more than 600,000 people go missing a year in America alone. Worldwide, approximately 8 million people go missing each year, meaning there are millions of missing persons cases just waiting to be solved. Today, I am going to shed some light on some cases maybe you've never heard of, like a girl that went missing only a couple meters away from her father, or 43 students that all went missing on the same day. It's an intense list, so let's get right on into it. Starting off this countdown, we have Bertha Marie Tid Newell. Mother of 10, yes, 10 children, Bertha Newell went missing on July 13th, 1948. She had informed her family that she was going to the grocery store, but hours passed and she never returned home. That's when they realized something bad had happened to her. What's odd is that she didn't take her purse or any personal belongings with her. Now, there are so many different rumors as to what happened to Bertha. One is that she joined a travel circus with a man or that she ran off with a secret lover. Two is that she murdered her husband and three is that she was taken to a nursing home in Woodsfield, Ohio. But police have never been able to prove any one of these theories. Now, a couple years later in 1955, someone did say they thought they saw her, but nothing came of the sighting. Bertha's disappearance still remains a huge mystery. In our ninth spot, we have the Yuba County Five. On July 17th, 1981, a group of friends set out to catch a college basketball game. Now, the friends did have some developmental disabilities, but they were fully functional. Two of them had driver's licenses and even spent time serving in the army. But that night, the friends never returned home. And of course, people were just quick to blame their disabilities. Later, their car was found up the side of a mountain. The friends were nowhere to be seen. The area in which the car was found was 2.5 hours away in the opposite direction of the route that they would have taken to go home. This case is just super strange. Now apparently there were a couple of sightings of the men after they were declared missing. A woman reported seeing the five men in a red pickup truck on Saturday and Sunday, about an hour away from where their car was found abandoned. She claims that two men came into her store to buy food. One went to go make a phone call in the phone booth and two stayed in the truck. The freakiest part? Months later, four of the five men's bodies were found. One was found inside a trailer located on the mountain where their abandoned car was. The three other bodies were found alongside the road to the trailer. One of the men starved to death, yet the trailer was filled with food. So there's just tons of things about this case that just don't make sense. On top of it all, the fifth man's body, Gary, was never found. And to this day, he's still considered missing. In our eighth spot, we have Sylvia Lang. At 77 years of age, Sylvia Lang disappeared on January 23rd, 2010, while out walking her dog, Hetty. Hetty was later found near a parking lot in the North Beach area, but Sylvia was nowhere to be found. Now they did find her car with her two other dogs safely inside. Despite her age, Sylvia was in great mental and physical health. She was described as being very active and an experienced hiker. Sadly, it seems as if she might have fell while walking her dog and then got swept into the ocean. But after investigating, no body has ever been found. Coming in at number seven, we have Jason Anthony Jolkowski. On January 13th, 2001, Jason got called in early for work. During this time, his car was in the shop for repairs, so he figured he would just walk to work, but then changed his mind and arranged for his coworker to pick him up by his old school, which was about eight blocks from his home. However, when the coworker arrived at the meeting point, Jason was nowhere to be found. At 11.15 to 11.30, the coworker called up Jason's house and asked why he didn't meet at the school. The last time anyone saw him was at 10.45, when his neighbor saw him taking out the trash. So what happened between 10.45 to 11.15 during his walk to the meeting point? Surveillance videos at the school revealed that he never did arrive there. So along his way, something happened. And we might never know what happened and where Jason disappeared to. In our sixth spot, we have have Stacy Ann Arez. In 1981, Stacy joined a group of people to go on a horseback camping trip. On July 17th, they hopped on their horses and rode off to the Sunrise High Sierra Camp. After arriving there, Stacy informed her father that she wanted to take some photos at the nearby lake. Her father wanted to stay put, so he let her go by herself. It was pretty close to where he was. Now, there was an older man from the group who offered to accompany her, and so the two went off. But on the trek down, he got 
got tired and stopped for a rest while Stacy continued on. I mean, the man was 77 and it had been a long day already. So Stacy went down by the lake and was never seen again. The only thing left behind was her camera lens. Maybe she slipped and fell and got swept up. But honestly, we don't know what truly happened to young Stacy. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Craig Freer. On June 27th, 2004, 17 year old Craig Freer disappeared after wandering into the woods. He was never seen again. Now, prior to his disappearance, Craig had been fired from his job and broke up with his girlfriend. He was very upset about both of these incidents and failed to tell his parents about getting fired. On June 27th, Craig was visiting a friend when he received an angry phone call from his mom. She had found out that he had been fired and ordered him to come home. He said he would be home in 10 minutes, but he didn't get in his car. In fact, it was found abandoned in the apartment's parking lot. Craig was last seen on foot walking into the woods. Two boys witnessed him walking into the woods and claimed that Craig turned around, looked at them, then put his finger to his lips and mouthed, shh. That is so creepy, and that was the last time anyone had ever seen him. Where he ran off to, or if he's still alive, is still unknown to this day. Coming in at number four, we have the disappearance of 43 students. Now, this was a much bigger disappearance case because it wasn't just one person that disappeared. No, it was 43 people. So maybe you have heard of this one, but honestly, this is the first time that I've ever heard of it, and I am shook. So I had to include it on this list. So in September of 2014, a group of about 100 students from a teacher training college attended a protest in the town of Iguala. It was about a two hour drive away and they had gotten there by two buses. But on the way back, the buses were stopped by police and they opened fire. I think they believed that the bus had been hijacked. Anyways, some students were shot and killed. Those that survived shared how horrific it was. But 43 students went missing without a trace. Later, it was revealed that police might have handed them over to a drug gang, who then sadly either put them to work or killed them and discarded of their bodies. This case is just so disturbing and horrifying. Moving on to number three, we have Bryce Las Pisa. On August 30th, 2013, 19 year old Bryce disappeared while traveling from Sierra College in Northern California to his parents' house. His last contact was to his mother at around 5.30 a.m. when he told her he was going to sleep at the side of the road. Just hours later, his car was found overturned at the side of the road. The back windshield of his car was smashed out. There was blood on his headrest and on the back seat, but Bryce was nowhere to be found. It's thought that maybe he was the one who smashed the back window in order to escape, and then he just wandered off. He could have sustained a head injury from the crash, which then caused him to be disoriented. Now, a couple weeks before his incident, Bryce was acting quite out of character. He was drinking an awful lot, he told his girlfriend he had taken an ADHD pill that wasn't his, and he was taking another drug to help him stay awake. So we don't know why he was acting out like this or what truly happened to him. In our second spot, we have Ashley Fuller Reed. On the evening of January 14th, 1990, Ashley Reed planned to go on a date with a man named Robert and his friend. Some say the friend's name was Dave. So they met up at an IHOP restaurant. She arrived there safely as a witness spotted Ashley there with a man wearing cowboy boots, a cowboy hat, and a western style jacket. Who this man is to this day still remains a mystery. Ashley never returned home that night. When she did not return home, her mom sent her brother out at 5 a.m. to look for her. They found her car at the side of the road. It's bad fully dead. There were no signs of struggle at all though, but her keys and her purse were missing, along with Ashley, who was never seen or heard from again. And to this day, we don't know who that cowboy dude was and who Robert or Dave were. One possible theory is that she was killed by the serial killer Kenneth McDuff, who was on parole from death row at the time of her murder. Or maybe she was kidnapped by this western cowboy dude. I wish we knew. And in our number one spot, we have Charmini Anandeville. In June of 1990, 15 year old Charmini was super excited about her upcoming graduation. She had her dress already picked out, but she wanted to buy new shoes to match. Being low on money, she decided to pick up a job to afford new shoes for the dance. And she was so excited to be working this new job. On June 12th, Charmini left her home at 9 a.m. on her way to her first day at her new job. 
She has never been seen since. It's believed that this job never existed in the first place, but it was a way for someone to lure Charmini to them. She was missing for four months until her bones were found in a ravine. It's been over 20 years and still no one has been charged for her death. Although their prime suspect is Charmini's former neighbor, Stanley Tippett. There's a bunch of evidence pointing to Stanley, but still not enough to arrest him, which is just heartbreaking. Charmini and her family deserve justice. All right guys, we are gonna move right along to our comment shout out portion to try and brighten the mood. I'll be shouting out comments from the video, top 10 dark animal stories that shouldn't exist. It was a marathon video. MW commented, I found this channel randomly a few years ago and now I'm hooked. There you go, just reeling them in, baby. I don't know why I did that, that is so gross. Anyway, CTC underscore Mohammed commented, if you're reading this, I hope you have a good day and enjoy your winter break. Aw, oh, thank you, I hope you do too. Happy holidays, even though this is probably gonna go up after the holidays. But happy holidays, I hope you had a good one and a happy new year. AGS Official Gaming commented, the blue snub nosed monkey are cute. I agree, they are so cute. Monkeys used to be my favorite animal, but now cows are my favorite animal. All right guys, that's all the comments I'm shouting out for today's video. Make sure to comment something down below for a chance to be featured in my next comment shout out. And as always, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to Most Amazing Top 10 for more amazing videos. I've been your host, Lindsay Ivan, and I'll see you when I see ya.